right, settle down, folks. Get ready. The show's about to start. In DreamWorks Animation's film, Madagascar, a stellar lineup of talent bring life to the crazy animals of both the Central Park Zoo in New York City and the island of Madagascar. You must tell me, who the heck are you? I'm Alex, the Alex, and this is Gloria Marty and Melman. I play Alex, who's, I guess, sort of a little bit full of himself. He's sort of the main attraction at the zoo. He's the king of the Central Park Zoo. Alex, the lion! The animators were very inspired by Ben's face, and what he does is even when he's upset, he does this thing where he's just, you know that he's not really mad, that he's just really caring and upset, and so you still love him. Hey, you hear that? Marty's fine. Oh, that's good to know, because I was just wondering, uh, how could you do this to us, Marty? I thought we were your friends. At the beginning of the movie, I think he's really happy in his world, and Marty is looking for something more. They're best friends, though, and uh, they want different things, and I think that's sort of a lot of what the journey of the movie is, is about their friendship and how these two very different animals end up being there for each other as friends. I wished I could go to the wild. Yeah, I played a zebra and Marty. That's me. I'm loving San Diego. This place is off the chisang. So it's Chris Rock if he was born as a zebra. Marty is a glass half full kind of guy. He's not depressed about his life in the zoo. He has a great time there, but he just wonders if there might be something more out there. This isn't bad luck. This is good luck. Look around. There are no fences, no schedules. This place is beautiful. Baby, we were born to be here. Marty's a zebra that wants to get out of the zoo. He's a New Yorker. They're all New Yorkers. He's a little spoiled. Doesn't realize how good he has it. Ooh, yeah! We are taking a walk on the wild side. Look out! Marty the zebra is this character that just loves life. Exuberant, smart, funny, interested in the world around him. And Chris Rock is perfect for that. Come on, Mama, hold you. Oh, they are so you, cute from you? a reasonable distance. She's very maternal. She's definitely a take control, I got it, I can handle it type of woman. All righty, boys. Fun's over. Type of hippo. Marty, look, you've got to be just a little bit shush. more under. Don't you shush me. She's one of the strongest, toughest women I think I've ever met. Not to be pushed around, knows what she wants out of life. And uh, that's exactly who Gloria is, too. It's really possible to, to be a big, a big creature like Gloria, but still be really sexy and powerful and strong. <laughs> you just kind of want to snuggle up next to her and just hug on her and just roll all on her. Melman, 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 wake up, rise and shine. It's another fabulous morning in the Big Apple. Let's go. <laughs> Not for me. I'm calling in sick. What? I found a brown, another brown spot on my shoulder. See? Right there. You see? Melman, you know it's all in your head. Hmm? Well, I play Melman, the giraffe, and uh, he's, uh, you know, the tallest and the, the coolest of all the animals in the movie. <laughs> no, he's, uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> not really, but he's the tallest. Nature! It's all over me. Get it off. I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> Oh, I can see. Some actors just lend themselves perfectly for animation. David Schwimmel was one of those, where you know you hear him. You don't have to look at him. You can just hear him and go, he'd be a perfect Melman. He'd be a perfect hy hypochondriac. And he's sweet, and he's caring, and we wanted Melman to be comic relief as well as just someone really endearing. That room has some nifty little sinks you can wash up in. And look, free mints. Stunt tongues are very necessary in this film. There's a lot of tongue gags. Melman rarely uses his hands. I mean, his tongue is, <laughs> his, his tongue is very active. It's an older code, Skipper. I can't make it out. <laughs> Those are great. Good. Okay, Chris, we can move on to the next bit. My name is Chris Miller, and on Shrek 1 and 2, I uh, had an opportunity to play the Magic Mirror. And in Madagascar, I play a penguin named Kowalski. Kowalski's a bit of a scout. He assists in digging tunnels, breaking down codes, and uh, anything he can do for his captain and the rest of his crew. The voice of the lead penguin is Tom McGrath, who uh, is also directing the film. He plays the skipper. The skipper's voice was just, I think, from pitching the boards of the penguins. he just bark orders. Rico, progress report, status. And I had done scratch 
um, and pitched for so long with this character, we just got used to the voice. You hire mammal. Hmm? Can you read? The skipper is trying to be a bit of Robert Stack, because initially he was the inspiration. All right, let me think. <laughs> and shut him up! Trying to be a little bit Charlton Heston in a way, you know. I'd like to kiss you, doctor. And be a little bit suave to kind of compliment the, the barking, you quadruped. You know, Sprechen Sie English? And it just became a matter for me, speech-wise, of just over-articulating every single thing I say. Shh, shh, we're hiding. Be quiet, everyone, including me. Shh, who's making that noise? Oh, it's me again. We've got a great cast of lemurs on the island of Madagascar. Sasha Baron Cohen plays the voice of Julian, the king. And this guy is kind of dumb as a post, but uh, full of himself. He thinks he's the greatest leader. Wait. I have a plan. Presenting your royal highness, the illustrious blah, 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 you know, et cetera, et cetera. Hooray, let's go. I play Maurice, who is the assistant to the self-proclaimed king. I, 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 I kind of taken on this job. I feel like I'm a lot smarter than this guy. I'm telling you, that dude just gives me the heebie-jeebies. How can you have the heebie-jeebies for Mr. Alex? Look at him. He's so cute. Lemurs are so incredible. They're nocturnal animals with huge ears and eyes. I really like the whole fur because, you know, the, the tail, you can whip that around. Sometimes when I get cold, I whip, the, whip it around me. I whip it on top, do a Don King thing with it. It's a number of things that you can do with a tail of that uh, fuzzy magnitude. What are they? Oh, oh, get it, get it. What are they? In the movie, I play Mort, uh, who is uh, one of the lemurs. He's in charge of the cute department for the movie because he's uh, just a ball of cute. Oh, I just want to dunk him in my car. I think there's some sort of uh, scientific mathematic uh, ratio of big eyes to small furry head. And uh, his eyes are about, I'd say, 60% of his head. I liked him first. Before I even met him, I liked him. Yes, I yes. Him. You hate them compared to how much I, I like shut him. up. You're so annoying. <laughs> Oy vey. Oy vey! Oy vey, everybody! When these guys came on board, Jada and Ben and Chris and Dave and the rest of the folks, you know, they take it to a whole new level, a place that uh, you never even expected or anticipated. <gasps> Lady, what is wrong with you? And that's part of the joy of, of doing this kind of work and working with that, that kind of really star talent.